I have another video up on YouTube and on my website explaining the groove from Alien Hip Hop by Virgil Donati. So you might want to check that out to see exactly what I'm playing here, but I'm going to give you some exercises that I've been working on to improve uh, my timing basically and the execution of that groove. So the groove sounds something like this. So check out that video to see what the hell is going on with that. But basically there's a bass drum pattern which is under a hi hat and snare pattern that's playing every third note. And the bit that always used to screw me up when I was playing was the kind of third time round and the specific combination of bass drums against hi hat and how things were falling. But if you break it down, you'll find out that uh, you basically have every combination of bass drums with hi-hats. So the hi-hat's playing one and two and three and four and, and we've got three notes for each of those. And the bass drums are either gonna, well, are gonna play two of those notes. So either the one and the trip of the triplet or the trip and the let of the triplet or the one and the let of the triplet. And it happens that they play them both ways around. So the one and the trip with the right foot on the one and the left foot on the trip, or the opposite as well. So there's six different things that you can work on to help you get this pattern down. So the first one would be to play the right foot on the, um, the one, <laughs> on the downbeat, and the left foot on the let of the triplet. So that's like a shuffle groove essentially. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. And then you can do the opposite. So play the same uh, sounding pattern, but the left foot playing on the beat and the right foot playing on the let. I use the hi-hat instead of the second bass drum pedal, that's this. And the first one was. So the other two patterns that you can work through in both ways around are, uh, let's do the right foot on the one and the left foot on the trip. And the other way. And then the right foot on the trip, the left foot on the let. And the other way, the left foot on the trip and the right foot on the let. And once you feel comfortable with all those, playing the pattern in time won't be as difficult. Now, there was one particular one that I struggled with for ages and I'm still the least comfortable with it. And I think that was playing the left foot on the trip and the right foot on the left. So what I've been working on, and I think this is a really good exercise to improve basically any groove that involves triplets, is placing something on the trip of the triplet. So one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. And basically placing every limb in that position and getting comfortable with how it sounds because playing on the downbeat is the easiest thing to do. Playing on the let, if you've played any shuffle grooves, is not too difficult to do. But placing that middle note of the triplet accurately without any reference is not so easy. So let's put the hi-hat and this is best to do to a click, and I recommend Octopus Sequencer to program in some grooves and make this simple. Um, but let's put the hi-hat on the beat, and 
I'm going to put my right hand on the trip. So the idea is to get really comfortable with how that sounds and so you can tell just by the sound of it whether you're placing it correctly. Now the tendency if this is unfamiliar, unfamiliar territory will be to turn that into playing offbeat eighth notes or perhaps a variation of offbeat sixteenth notes so the E or the A, uh, the E would be and the art would be. So there's three, no, the E, the and, the A, uh, and the trip of the triplet. Four different places within 16th notes and triplets that you can place this middle note. And you basically need to be comfortable playing all of them and knowing which is which. Um, so one thing that I like to do to make this, uh, to kind of check that I'm aligned, is to either fill in the gaps of the triplet with the right hand, so or the left hand. So for this one, and then you're playing all three notes, or even play all three notes with the left hand. Or play um, a eighth note triplet with the left hand. So one, two, three, one, two, three, which is basically every other note of these three that I was just playing. So instead of one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, you'd be playing one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then the hands are playing one and two, three, one and two, three. So you've got a three against two polyrhythm. Um, and that just helps as a way of lining things up. Play around with it and you'll, you'll see what I mean. So the next step is to get comfortable doing that with all the different limbs. So I'm going to do the left hand, play the hi-hat on the beat again, and the left hand on the trip. Again, get comfortable with it. I mean, you can use that as an ostinato and play different things with your right hand and your right foot. And just get really comfortable with that. But basically, it comes down to being able to hear dekun, 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 and be comfortable with that as a rhythm. Um, then the right foot. Okay, I could do with some work on that one. And then for the left foot, I'm going to use my right foot to play the downbeat. Okay, you can see I need to do some work on this. But basically at some point these should start, I hope, to feel comfortable and then that's going to help solidify any grooves that involve them. So finally, something that I like to do in sound checks, uh, a little exercise to work on these sort of mental subdivisions. In sound check, you spend a lot of time doing this.
just while the sound man, you know, balances the levels and sorts his EQ out. And I always feel that's kind of wasted time. So something I've been doing in sound checks is considering that to be the pulse. And on my leg with my left hand, I'll play variations on either the trip or the let or the E or the and or the a, or maybe even going into quintuplets and switching between them. And really the motion of this right hand shouldn't change, but I find that it does. And it seems to be related to where the left hand note goes and how it sounds and all those kind of things. So just to give you a quick example, I'll play on the snare drum and I'll go to begin with from the A with the left hand to the let of the triplet and switch between. So I'll work through all four, starting with the A. And you could do a similar thing, but perhaps hear the tom as the let or the trip, or you know, as another part of the groove and play the downbeat with the left hand. So I'll be playing ding, 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 but I'll be thinking ding, like one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. So one, two, three, four. or more in uh, line with this lesson, thinking of the trip of the triplet. So the click is one, two, three, four, one. So that's it, just getting comfortable with the trip and the E's and the A's like we've done in other lessons, but the trip, I think, is a real key one. Uh, and hopefully that will help solidify our playing. Uh, hope you get something out of that, and I'll see you next time.